That's the beginning of Christmas Bells by Kohler, a German composer from the 1800s. This piece is easy to learn and fun to play. Um, it does a lot with the pedal sound of the piano, which I love because it's really using the instrument in a full way, using the full sound of the instrument. Uh, the piece is in G major, it's about two pages long, and the easiest part about it is the left hand. We can start by looking at that. Left hand is beginning with two notes, G, the lowest G on the piano, and D above it, creating that interval of a fifth. We're going back and forth with quarter notes. When we have a repeated pattern like that, it's called an ostinato. Fun fact, the word ostinato comes from the same root word as obstinate or stubborn. Think about that when you're keeping that constant steady left hand going. We add pedal to it to create this blending Christmas bells idea. Listen to how that changes what I'm doing with the left hand. For the first two measures, I'm not changing the pedal at all. It's marked to keep the damper pedal through that to create the blend of the sound. In the right hand, we're doing totally blocked chords through the whole piece, starting with G major, moving through a few other chords. A blocked chord is where we play all the notes together. A broken chord is notes one by one, something like that. So in this case, all blocked chords and three notes at a time. Sometimes four, we'll get to that. That's the first phrase. We're gonna talk about two things. One, how to learn this and practice it, and then two, how to make it more musical and polished when you're ready to perform. Number one, how to make sense of these chords. The most important part is the top note. That's giving us a melody line um, and kind of shaping what we do with the phrase. Here's the melody, the top note of each chord. At this point, it doesn't really matter which fingers you use, but I want you to find the notes, listen to it, even sing it if you're comfortable doing that. Here's the melody one more time. Simple, G major, no accidentals, sharps or flats. We can figure that out. The next thing I like to do is look at the outer notes of each chord. The top note we just did and the bottom note. Let's slow down a little bit for this. The first thing we do is the interval of a sixth. That means we're covering the distance of six notes from top to bottom. As we go through these chords, you'll see they are all sixths. Let's do that. So that's simple. We're just shifting from one sixth to another, for that, I took away the pedal, I took away the musicality. I'm just thinking about how to place my hand on those notes. When I've done that a few times, I can go back and add the middle note. This is the one that changes the, the shape of the chord and also the sound of the chord. Check each one slowly. Watch that F sharp to be in the key of G. And that may take some time to get comfortable with all three notes at a time. If you like to slow it down even more and build each chord like this. Broken and then blocked. Sometimes that's easier to think of note by note and then the whole sound together. Eventually we want to have each one blocked all in a row. Um, Let's jump to how to make that more interesting, more musical. Once you've got it learned, it's time to practice. Play it again and again until you feel comfortable and natural when you play that phrase. Two ways that you can make this work. 
One is by creating a dynamic shape through the phrase. In other words, a little bit of rise and fall. That's actually written on the music with a crescendo, meaning to get louder, and then a decrescendo, getting softer again. Listen to how that shapes the phrase. Getting louder up to this point, and then backing off softer again to this point. One more time. Each phrase in this piece has a rise and fall. A good rule when we're phrasing is that we don't play two things in a row at the same volume. We are either getting louder or getting softer. It's really that simple. So a good, a good approach is to find a high point, a high note, or an intense moment in the phrase. That's going to be our loudest point. And then get louder to there and back off after it. Uh, that creates a nice shape to the phrase. The second thing I wanted to point out is what we call voicing. Bringing out the top note of a chord, uh, the melody note in this case, will help us to guide that phrase and also help your listener to find the melody. The top note here, B, our starting note, needs to come out louder than the rest of the chord. You can practice that by playing that note and then fill in the rest of the chord a little softer if you can. That takes some practice. Eventually, we want the top note to come out louder than the other chords. Listen to how that sounds. Let's go back to how we play this piece with a lot of pedal, a lot of ringing, and remembering that the title is Christmas Bells. Ringing and blending. Here we go. Second phrase is similar. High point and then back down. I'd like to point out here at measure 10, third phrase, we have the marking pianissimo and we're getting a little bit of repetition in the phrases. At this point, I would add the soft pedal. That's the one on the left. I'm going to press that down to create a softer, more muted sound for this phrase. Listen. And then I'll lift that left foot to create a little more open sound. I'm on the fourth phrase. When we find four phrases in a row that are similar or even exact repetition, we can do things with dynamics that might make it more interesting um, on a large scale. I hope you enjoy working on Christmas Bells by Kohler and have a wonderful holiday season. Thanks so much for watching, I'm Amy. Don't forget to hit subscribe and tap the notification bell. And be sure to check out the Playground Sessions interactive app. I'll see you soon for the next lesson video.